Fifty years ago, Zenji Abe dropped a 550-pound bomb at Pearl Harbor on what he believes was the USS Arizona. Abe, then 25, was pilot of a Japanese Val dive bomber. With the shout release, I pushed the bomb release button and maneuvered my control stick, flying like this. We flew very low, 40 or 50 meters in high speed above Ford Island. Abe was on the second wave of Japanese attack planes arriving about an hour after the first wave caught the U.S. Navy off guard. As he approached his target, Abe learned by Morse code that the initial attack had been successful. For a second, my back shuddered. It was my very first battle. I thought that, although they said Tora, 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 by the time our second attack force made the flight, we would be flying right into the awaiting attack from below. My back shuddered at the thought. Iyozo Fujita, too, was on the second wave, piloting one of Japan's infamous Zero fighter planes over Oahu. He engaged a U.S. plane, attempting to fight back in what turned out to be fierce head-on aerial combat. But the plane, not wanting to crash itself, swerved up. And as it did, the bottom of the plane was exposed to my side, so I shot into it as hard as I could. He much later learned the fate of his American adversary. He landed with 500 shots inside the plane. It's amazing. 100 is possible, but 500 is something else. Both these men consider themselves lucky to have survived the attack. They say 63 of their Japanese companions did not. And both have vivid memories of the anticipation leading up to the big day. Months of training, including practices at Kagoshima Bay off Japan's southern Kyushu Island, chosen for its geographical resemblance to Pearl Harbor. The six-carrier fleet gathering off the northern island of Atarofu in late November, taking a northerly route over the Pacific to avoid U.S. detection arriving in early December some 220 miles north of Oahu, and they remember the pre-attack jitters. And we were speculating that half the pilots would be killed in the attack. I was prepared to die from the beginning, so I couldn't go to sleep the night before from excitement. I drank about six bottles of beer, but I couldn't get drunk. Neither of these men believes he committed any crime by attacking Pearl Harbor. Both say they acted under duty to follow orders handed down through the Japanese Imperial Navy's chain of command from the Emperor. But they regret the U.S. did not receive the 30-minute notice that was supposed to have been delivered in Washington from Japan's foreign ministry. We fought, believing there had been a declaration of war, of course. But we later heard that we declared war after the attack. I was deeply disappointed. This happened because of the negligence of the Japanese embassy staff stationed in Washington, D.C. We regret that. Because of this, people point fingers at us saying it was a treacherous attack and a sneak attack. After the war, Abe became a pilot in Japan's Air Defense Force and later took a management position in private industry. Fujita became a pilot for Japan Airlines. Both are now enjoying a life of retirement in Tokyo. For many years, they, like other Japanese survivors of Pearl Harbor, kept quiet about the day of infamy. But now that a half century has passed, they feel more comfortable telling their story for the historic record. Abe says he feels a special responsibility to speak out now because of what he perceives as common ignorance in Japan over the country's wartime past. Taylor Henry, CNN, Tokyo.